Hello viewers and welcome to another STM32 World video. In a previous video we were looking at the STM32 uh, watchdogs, in particular the so-called independent watchdog. Now the independent watchdog is a peripheral device separate from the CPU core uh, which once started will reset the microcontroller at a fixed time if it hasn't been reset in that process. Now, internally in the STM32, it is running off of the low speed internal RC. And what we found in the previous video was the timing was really rather unpredictable. Uh, and I don't like things I don't understand, fully understand. So I wanted to make sure that I actually had this right. Now the calculation we were doing uh, in the last video was that we were setting this what stock time uh, can be calculated from this. And if we are going with 1.5 second, <coughs> running at 32,000 hertz with a prescaler of 16 we end up with a counter value of 3000 that should give us exactly 1.5 second so let's look here we activate the watchdog and we set it to 16 and we set that down counter to 3000 uh, that should give us exactly one and a half second if we look at the code uh, we were resetting this uh, at every second and everything worked fine. But when we r increase this value and getting closer to the 1.5 second, we, it still wasn't resetting and we could actually go quite a lot over the one and a half second we calculated and I didn't really understand why that was the case. So I was speculating whether there is a way to actually measure, uh, let's look at it again, measure this value. And as it turned out, ST have actually made that possible. If we look at, and this can only be done by timer five, if we look at timer five, channel four, it can do something called input capture direct mode from remap. And that remap, if we look down here, timer channel 5, channel 4 is connected to the LSI and we can detect on a rising edge. So in other words, in our source code, if we do a capture callback on timer 5 and just increase a timer, that should increase once every clock cycle, every cycle in this uh, LSI. Um, so we need to start our timer in uh, interrupt mode, channel 4, channel 4 and timer 5. And then what we're doing down here is we're still doing the reset every uh, second at the moment, but we are now printing out that timer count and then resetting in here. Of course, this way of doing it is not 100% precise because we are just running it in our while loop down here and it could be off uh, by a few clock cycles, but we don't really care about that. We just want a close estimate of how is that internal clock actually running. So if we try to run this code, you will see that it runs perfectly and our timer count is actually 28,000. I think 28,300, it, it cycles around there. So if we do the calculation with this, uh, as per this site, you can see we can actually calculate the T by, let's fire up our calculator there. If we look at the calculator, so if we say we have 16, oh, for, there. 16 times 3000 what am I doing here six I lost track 16 3000 multiply 
that's 48,000 divided by our frequency. So if we divide that by 28,300 rather than 32,000, which we did before, we actually end up with 1,000, 1.696 seconds. That is the actual interval because the clock runs quite a lot far, uh, slower than it should. It should r run at 32,000. Uh, it's running at 28,300. So let's try to see if these values actually match the reality. So if we try to set this to 1,000, uh, 1.6 uh, seconds, and we have that value up in the top here. If we try to set this one to 16, what, uh, what where was the calculator again? 169. So if we take, set it at 1600, if we understand correctly, it should actually still work 100% and never reset. So let's try to run that and look at the sale output. There we go. And it still runs. However, if we set it to 1700, 1 1.7 seconds, it should actually reset all the time. So let's try that. And there we go. It resets because it doesn't get kicked or refreshed uh, often enough. So now we are closer to something that actually matches what we see. Let's try to set it to 16.9 and see if that works. Remember from our calculator 1696 is actually our theory, our practical based on this. It actually runs but if we try to set it at 1695 five and see what happens that is pretty close to our expectations and we see it survived the first but i think it will reset eventually there we got a reset so and now we get reset all the time oh it survived a few so in other words we can measure we could set this probably fairly simple if we set this to 1500 it should not reset of course this being a watchdog it is merely to to let us uh, to provide safety so we should probably still run this at a thousand refresh interval but i just wanted to make sure that what I see mesh, uh, matches what is the theoretical way this should operate. So again, the issue here is that this low speed internal RC oscillator is wildly imprecise. It is also drifting, but we can see we are well within the specs at 28, right? But it is not 32, which is where it should be. It is 28, but way above 17, which is the absolute minimum. At 17, this would actually mean, we have it here, it would actually mean almost 2.82 seconds between each uh, refresh would be acceptable. Uh, so that's pretty much all I intended to do in this video, just to make sure that is, but the interesting takeaway from this is that it is actually possible using timer 5 um, channel 4 it is possible to measure that LSA I, I was actually considering I have a setup um, with the oscilloscope and that oscilloscope can handle 32 kilohertz no problem so um, I could have measured it with the oscilloscope but it's nice to do it internally without any additional hardware as usual if you feel that you learned anything or enjoyed any part of this video please do like and subscribe down below it helps a lot with the channel and um, as usual uh, have a wonderful rest of the day